Hello and welcome to another episode of the LB Review Podcast. As always on the podcast, I'm joined by Ben and Lewis. How are you doing, lad? All right. How's it going? I'm all right. Ben, how are you? Apart from the COVID, I am fine. You've been locked up for a week or so now. How's it gone? I'm going to lie, it's shite. <laughs> now our week's going to fall out on Monday. Uh, oh, isolation's the worst, but once you're out, it's a good relief. As for today, um, we're going to talk through the Euros so far. Scotland's performance in the Euros against Czech Republic and, and Croatia, and then some transfers as well as, as well as some predictions for the Euros going forward. As for Scotland, starting with Scotland, the first game against Czech Republic, what, was, what did you make of the first game, Liz? Um, I can't lie, I didn't watch it. I was at work. So I actually missed it. But lucky, from lucky what I've seen in the highlights, we missed far too many chances. And we will and he just tore us apart. Yeah, I think that the chances that we missed in that game were just, they just came back to bite us when, obviously the first goal was a good header and then the second goal was just about a freak goal from Czech. But Ben, you, wa- you watched the game. What did you make of it? Uh, uh, watched what I could remember I was at the pubs uh, I kind of just drunk the sorrows away but uh, I just think also Scotland's first competitive game I think some of the players kind of just crapped us a bit and uh, they had high and the fans had high expectations but obviously the Czech Republic have turned out to be actually a very good team so far and it kind of just proved that they were a better team on the day Yeah I think everyone in the group including Scotland, thought that Czech Republic would probably finish bottom, but they've defied the odds and obviously they went on to beat the Netherlands this week. But I think that going into the quarterfinals, is it Denmark that they play? The Czech Republic? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, I, th- I, I think they'll have a good chance of the Denmark have been performing well recently, but down with a shout, obviously, Netherlands got a man sent off, which, but the Czech Republic had to score the goals to go through in the end, and that's what they did, so... Uh, as for the the second Marshall, the second goal when David Marshall, then has just in your face there. Uh, do you think it was David Marshall's fault, or do you think it's more of just a just a beautiful goal from mm-hmm. Sheik? I'd say a bit of both, but also yeah. there's just extra errors. Marshall being basically near the halfway line, Sheik scored a beauty, and Henry trying to whack a shot from forty yards out with a man tight on him. It's just none of it really went well together for Scotland, but also Schick still had to do his job. And if it was someone like Ronaldo doing it, you wouldn't have ended it. But it was some finish to be fair. Probably go with tournament. Yeah, it's, it's definitely up there. But although Jack Henry should have never have shot, maybe Marshall's been told to stand that high. But he's unlucky. But maybe he just shouldn't have been that high up in the end. But that you didn't think that Schick was gonna pull that off but um, as for the start lineup against Czech Republic list were you happy with the lineup because it was quite a questionable lineup that, he, that Steve Clark did put out it was questionable but obviously he's a man who makes the decisions he obviously decided not to go with Gilmore and it maybe didn't pay off as well as what he'd hoped go my arm strong over him but I I I think he's still the man for the job, I reckon. Give him the qualifiers for the World Cup. Yeah, I agree. I think that the, a big miss from that Czech Republic game was obviously Kieran Tierney. But uh, yeah. Jack Henry did fill in all right, apart from the shot from 40 yards out that he took for the second goal. But um, I think we had to win that game against Czech Republic, Ben, do you think, if we were to go through? Uh, probably, uh... Both put on to four points, and you're probably going through three points. So, I think it would have helped. But also, if we beat them, we would have been through. We would have been maybe not watching our team anymore after this week, but still would give us a chance in the next round. Moving on to the England game at Wembley, Ben, you were down in London. How was London, and how good an experience was it? Well, like, if, it's, if it's London escaped me COVID, then it was worth it. But it was worth it. <laughs> It's just one of the couple of days to remember for your life, obviously. So the first time I've been in a crowd like that and just going down, everyone just 
being together, you know, Ranger Circle or Hot Flat Abdul Boy, but <laughs> there's, for that, but there's, there's reasons he's been chucked up on, and uh, just yeah, but it's a bit fair what he's said in the past. Uh, London was absolutely buzzing, it was just, it's just one of the things you'll never forget. Where did you watch the game and what did you do for kickoff? Well, we meant we we're meant to have a pub book, but the pub kind of just kind of shut us out. We could kind of just told us that it was full when it really wasn't it. So mm. I went back to the hotel with a few drinks, and then as soon as the full time went, we we're straight back to Leicester Square where we were before. Just absolutely buzzing. Oh. With everything else, Lois, as for you for the England game, what were your plans for watching the game? Yeah, uh, went out for the game. Me, a few mates. It was just some night. It was a bit, it was very nervous, go, never going into it, you know, because we thought we were going to get absolutely well. Some folk thought we were going to get absolutely hammered. Me, used to were hopeful for the game, as oh, you should have been. Oh, and uh, we got a good result as well. But obviously, a big name in the starting lineup or names were Kieran Tierney and Billy Gilmore, who well, Billy Gilmore came into the side, Tierney back into the side. What well, we as for Gilmore's performance at when we've been, how good a performance was it? Oh, it was massive. Also, it helped. It showed that it was a mess against Croatia. Also, no one's going to focus on a few of against Croatia we were one, but you had Modric in that game. But uh, for, against England, it was just spot on, best player on the pitch for us. Also, the intercept, interceptions, passes, everything he'd done was correct. And he was one of the reasons why we ended up getting a draw. Do you think maybe it was either Southgate's team decision? Or do you think it was just Scotland's tactical or tacticals or tactics that got them through the game to get the nil nil? Or do you think it was more Southgate's team choice? Um, about both, really. I think we set up perfect goal with McTominay turning in Hanley at the back. Hanley was phenomenal. Yeah. McTominay's just McTominay when he plays at centre back. He's always puts in the performance. Same with Tierney. Robertson looked good. O'Donnell looked good. Like say Gilmore, he's going to be a main start in Chelsea's team next season if he doesn't go on loan, which I think alone is what he needs. But I just think England's team was right, but the way we set up tactically shut them out perfect. I think that uh, when that John Stones header hit the post, I feared the worst. I can't lie. Oh, I was like, oh no, here we go, and then. Oh. They were missing a couple of chances. Then Shea Adams had the chance. Stephen O'Donnell had the volley. And I was like, we could actually do this. Maybe nick a goal. But I just had a feeling that in the end, it was, it was a, a draw was a fair result, but we could have nicked it in the end. Um, as for Harry Kane, the Euros so far, Ben, what do you make of his performances in, in the group stage, apart from apart from yesterday, we did obviously get the goal, but he was isolated again yesterday. He's, he scored one goal yesterday and he's acted like he's just won the tournament for him, honestly. It does my head. He's a world class striker when he plays for his club, but for country this tournament, he's just not been anywhere near it. He's, he needs to. Off, he's got all the bias from the English talking that saying, aye, but if he gets past the ball more, but he also needs to try and make that space to get past the ball. And he's just, he's been very lazy for England. And he's just, I think he's got in his head that he's a big, he's such a big player that. He doesn't need to do the job, but I just don't think he's been good enough. I think that the Croatia game was obviously obviously the biggest game going into it because we knew if we win, we were through. Do you think maybe the pressure got to us in that Croatia game, Liz? Or do you think the Croatia's quality say, just showed through? Yeah, I'd probably more go with Croatia's quality because we didn't play bad in the game. We just missed a lot of chances. And when you look at Modric's goal for the second... When he's scoring that, it does demoralise you and sort of kills the game off, then, yeah. even though it is 2 1. I think that um, obviously Billy Gilmore was another big miss in the Croatia game. Obviously, he couldn't play because he had COVID. But as for Stuart Armstrong, do you think Stuart Armstrong was the right man to come in in that game, Ben? I would say, I'd say aye, I'd say no. I'd say maybe give somebody else a bit of a chance or something, but then I also felt. If Armstrong, Armstrong had, had quality and he, he's done it before, he's done it for Southampton. And if he had, getting, he did have a decent enough game sometimes passing the ball about, but obviously it wasn't as good as a fuck around him. So he, that's why folk wanted him off. But I think it was fair enough to put him in, and, but maybe I'd switched it a bit quicker to take him off. 
you think that obviously Luka Modric is you know his quality, but his goal was probably although it's not as good as Schick's, but it's certainly up there with the technique that he used, Lewis. Oh, definitely. Just the way it felt him outside his right foot, right in the top corner. Although we could have been out to the ball faster to stop him getting the shot away. That is the only disappointing thing, yeah. is that it could have been stopped. I think that's where the quality, just the difference in quality between Scotland and Croatia. Like Croatia have a player like Modric and they've also got players like Brozovic and uh, Perisic on the wing as well. But I think that that Croatia game, maybe should have tried, although we got the 0-0, maybe should have made some substitutions earlier just to try and impact the game. You know, Dykes wasn't up to much. Uh, maybe bring on Christie, Nisbet, something like that. But even Nathan Patterson, when you've seen him come on for the like, last five, ten minutes, he was up and down the wing and he was doing reasonably well. But obviously it's a risk to yeah. play the two players. So I think Steve Clark did get the team selection right. It was just maybe that the quality shown through and to the team, would you agree, Ben? Uh, aye, definitely. It was, I just... The teams we came up against Czech, so the team you'd say maybe didn't have the quality that well, obviously the other two have, but I feel like they're just such a very good, well organised team. Whereas obviously it's Scotland's first tournament, they didn't they're not as organised as much. Like obviously England has quality which helped them and then obviously Croatia with Modric just runs the show everywhere he goes. So I think Scotland just got done over a bit by quality. Yeah, I agree. Moving on to the other groups then. Well, we made our predictions in the last podcast. Um, we had a few shockers. Go back who, and watch it if you haven't. I, 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 in fact, no, I wouldn't because my, my predictions were absolutely <laughs> awful. And Turkey group a, will be underdogs. Uh, right, okay. Right, well, we'll start with it then. Group A, which was Italy, Turkey, Wales and Switzerland. Going through in that group was Italy, Wales and Switzerland and Turkey finishing bottom. We'll not talk about Turkey finishing bottom and I had them to get to the semi-finals. But as for the Italians, start with the Italians. Lois, how impressed were you being by Italy so far in the tournament? They've they've been my team in the tournament so far. They've just been so good. The way they press a ball, the way they play, they're just well drilled. Folk were saying obviously before the Euros, they'd been, what was it, 27 games unbeaten, but hadn't really played anyone like sort of that standard yeah. I think now they've proven why they went so long unbeaten yeah I agree and especially especially to beat Turkey like they did 3-0 when Turkey really should have been a closer game Turkey should have went through and went to the semi-finals like I predicted but they didn't <sighs> why did I put I just thought that maybe because of the players that they had and then like the path the way that they had as well that maybe they'd have a chance but shocking prediction shocking as for the other two teams that went through Wales and Switzerland obviously Wales are now out the tournament after 4 0 defeat of Denmark but Switzerland going and beating France what did you make of that game Ben it was a brilliant game of the night uh, it was a great game but I, I, to be honest, I wasn't that shocked that it happened how the tournaments went for some teams obviously Turkey going out of the ball I wasn't super shocked what happened it's just Switzerland were just dug right in and they showed the quality that they have got if they'll just fight for it and also it's worked for them. They've managed to just dig in and get the result they wanted to. Even if it was down to penalties and Mbappe. Yeah, some luck. They still a young player. It wasn't an amazing penalty. It wasn't the worst penalty, but it happens to the best of them. Switzerland didn't really impress me that much in the group compared to what Wales did, but obviously Wales and Wales drew them in the first game. Then uh, I think they beat Italy, beat them, and then they beat Turkey. But obviously, the four points gets you through. But as for Wales, unlucky against them. Well, the red card against Italy on Paddy was a bit unfair for them. But they, the reason that they dug, dug in well against Italy, the other two games they played well as well with beating Turkey, which was a massive win. Do you think that Wales were unlucky to play Denmark at the time, right time, or just that it was? Too much for Wales to handle us. I think, obviously, probably was the wrong time to get an informed Denmark team. Obviously, yeah. they had the problems with Ericsson, the loss of us two games, and then to bounce back against Russia, yeah. four goals, 
you're going to be high on confidence when you're playing four days later against Wales and you, they go and put four past them again. So I think it was the wrong time to play a team like Denmark. I think Denmark have a good chance of getting to the semis if obviously they've got Czech Republic, but they'll probably face either, or they will face either England or Ukraine. And then yeah. most likely England will probably beat the Ukraine, but Denmark will not stand down against England if they do face them. I think that Denmark will pose a threat to England. Maybe a, only a team like Croatia has so far, or even obviously Germany yesterday, but Germany, they weren't up to much history apart from that Müller chance that he should have put away, but somehow missed. We'll get to that. Um, as for Turkey, Ben, you just mentioned it there, very poor. Wasn't it? So, it's like, for Danny Kemmler, it's like, it's like turning up for Christmas dinner and there'll be no, be, no Brussels sprouts. Or no gravy, no Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts? No, no, uh, no. You don't have Brussels sprouts, sprouts on a Christmas dinner. Exactly. No, if there's no Brussels sprouts, there's no Christmas dinner on the... Oh, exactly. Yeah. I don't care if you want to make Christmas dinner, but it's, uh, there's no good enough whatsoever. Like, so it's just... Uh, I think the expectations of everyone had some just kind of it's made it even worse on finishing on no points. I think right. if they had went and got maybe a win and went out on a win, then it wouldn't have been as bad. But it's just zero points is it's embarrassing to say the least. It's embarrassing. Imagine they finishing on a point. And then predicting them to, put, to go to the semis. But... That's just a lot of people knowledge. Moving on to Group B, we had <laughs> Belgium, Denmark, Finland and Russia. Belgium and Denmark went through in that group with Finland just narrowly missing it in third place. Belgium, another favourite for the tournament. They beat Portugal the other night. Lewis, do you see them going all the way? No. I think Italy will win it now. Do you think? That, that's my prediction. I think Italy will put them in the quarters and go on to win the tournament. I think that I think De Bruyne is injured as well as Hazard, so it's massive misses for them. And then obviously Eden Hazard's not been up to much, but you still know the quality that he possesses. So, but they've still got Lukaku and they've still got quality in their side. But I do agree with you. I don't think that Italy. Well, I shouldn't even make a prediction because my predictions have been awful so far. But I do think that Italy will get at least to the final. Um, yeah. As for as for Denmark, we mentioned just there. They're now been through their troubles. Ben, how far can you see Denmark going? I think I think they'll go the full way to the final. I think they're going to beat any team that comes in the way. England especially, like England, will think it's we've got a walk in the park now. But Denmark are now your dark horse. You said now the Turkey, but everyone thought wouldn't they, they watch them now go get put in the next round or something. But the, I think they can go the whole way, and you'll see a Denmark. I, I could see an Italy Denmark final, but then Belgium could always kind of just sneak in there. Uh, I think, I think it'll either be Belgium or, Belgium or Italy who gets that final, definitely. But um, moving on to Group C, I had an absolute shocker. With, well, not an absolute shocker, but I predicted the Netherlands to finish second. And they basically... I predicted dom- it perfect. Yeah, they dominated the, the group, um, beating Austria, Ukraine and Macedonia. Um, as for the Netherlands, were you shocked when they got beat the other night, Liz? Um, Yeah. I think everybody, you think Netherlands point Czech Republic, so I fancy them to go through as a big, bigger team, yeah. probably better team player-wise as well. But it is a surprise, but is isn't, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, as for Austria, Ukraine, I mean, Ukraine's in the quarterfinal. I didn't expect that at all. Um, they got through to the quarterfinals last night. But Looked very good as well. A few, I've seen a few folks saying that they spent a lot of time on the deck injured, trying to waste time and stuff like that. But they did play well. Their first goal was a beauty. When a lot, a lot of fight, fight and passion from them. That's what yeah. it was. I think that England will have too much of them in the end when they do play each other next week. But they've played well so far and they deserve their place in the quarterfinals, I would say. Um, moving on to Group E, which, yeah, again, had an absolute <laughs> shocker with this prediction. But Something I think like everyone, I think everyone predicted Spain to finish top. Um, were you a bit 
disappointed with Spain's performance has been? I would just say I was disappointed. It's just I didn't have I had them to finish top, but I didn't have high expectations for them. Obviously, how they've been in recent years, and it's just I think I wasn't even paying attention to how bad like how bad they could have done when because you've got Sweden who have just like absolute run that kind of riot, and I think that's kind of just took their focus away from Spain. Obviously, Spain had their game this weekend. They done very well. It was a great game to watch, but I feel like it was kind of expected. They're either going to go and win the group, or they're going to have maybe a shocker of a game. I think and then do well, which it wasn't amazing for them. But you know, we got through the end. So yeah, I think that the most disappointing team in that group was Poland. You know, I thought that they yeah. maybe pick up a win against Slovakia, a point against Sweden, maybe a chance to get maybe a chance to get a, a result against mm-hmm. Spain, but um, I did think that Poland would go through. It's a front of Sweden, but another shocking group to predict. Uh, you didn't, I don't think Sweden would top the group, but they obviously got the wins against Slovakia and Poland. Moving on to Group F, which was known as the Group of Death, but now that they're all out, it's. I thought that yeah. I, I had two teams in the final in this group, so yeah, again another shocking prediction. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. As for you, Lewis, did you expect the group to lie like that, or did you think that Germany or Portugal would tip France to the top of the group? I think I I was sort of had France to win the group, and then Germany and Portugal was sort of either either way. Like yeah. no matter what position they go finish, they'll probably end up going through. Hungary obviously finished bottom, very unlucky. Yeah. If you put like a team like Ukraine or Macedonia on that group instead of say Germany then Hungary probably go through. Yeah. Hungary were very Just, unlucky. Yeah. They had, yeah, they had that game against Germany, which was, I think, they, I think they went 1-0 up, Germany equalised, and then straight away they went up the park and scored. Then Germany got the equaliser, which knocked them out, sadly. But there were certainly some, a good few games in that group. You know, the draw that Hungary had against France. Um, France has went over Germany, things like that. So... I didn't, I didn't think I expect Switzerland to beat France the other night. I think nobody did. Um, no. But, and then England, Germany yesterday, which was just an absolute shambles from the Germans, Ben. Uh, well, you just expected the quality had to just go and at least even score and just give England a bit of a threat. But we just, one player was spread for Germany for was Matt Hummels. Yeah. He put, he put his life on the line defending the left and centre and just did not get the help from that big Diddy Rudiger. As well. He's one of them. Honestly, he's disappointing. For him to even be at a World Cup, we've got probably more quality around him, which could be a younger boy that could have pulled up. But I think Germany just got walked over a bit mm-hmm. by England in the game. I mean, when they did try and play football, we just they kept the ball sometimes, but they didn't never took it attackingly or never took it towards a goal. I just think it was poor. As for Portugal, less another team that's underachieved. Did you expect Belgium to beat them, or did you think that they would have come out of top against Belgium? That's one game that could have went 50-50. Yeah. They're just far too similar. So I think for Belgium to go through, it's not a shock. I think a lot of folk probably would have backed Portugal. But at the same time, it's not a shock that Belgium went through just with the calibre of both teams. As for the quarterfinals coming up this week, we've got Belgium, Italy, Switzerland, Spain, Ukraine, England and Czech Republic, Denmark. As for you, Ben, who do you think has gone through in the games? Uh, Belgium, Italy is a hard one because Italy are a solid team, but Belgium, you know, they've got the quality up top that they can use, and obviously they've done it against Portugal. I'm going to go with Italy for. Uh, I think no, then the Republic, uh, England, I think will beat Ukraine. Uh, who's other game, sorry? Sweden, Sweden. Sweden, Sweden. Spain. Spain will pretty much same as me. Pretty much the same, but knowing us, it'll be Belgium versus Switzerland and Ukraine versus Czech Republic. Correct. Pretty much. So yeah, I'll be happy if that one happens, that way. Ukraine goes through. Ah yeah, true. I thought you said Czech Republic Denmark there, but uh that one. So um as for going into the semis and final, who do you think's winning the whole thing with? At the moment, on the way they're playing Italy. 
but I hope Spain. You hope Spain? Yeah. Do you think are England with a chance, Ben, or do you think that they'll, they'll not get as far as the English people hope? I, I don't really know, you know, I, just, I don't want it to happen. I don't really, as much as I'm a football fan, I couldn't care who goes on and wins it now. I just, uh, no. I was just here for Scotland. Obviously, I would have watched if Scotland were in it, but I, I, I don't know what England doing well anyway. They'll end up getting to, I, I, I don't know if I'd rather just get put by doing the embarrassment or get to the final and just, their hearts just go down. But then that same one in our trophy cup, so it's the final cup. So I just, I don't think I'm what I can really handle at this point, but just England do it. At least dare, dare to dream to coming out soon. <laughs> Would you rather they lost in the semi finals on penalties or the final on penalties? Semi final. No, my heart couldn't help. <laughs> final. <laughs> final. Heart final on penalties would be absolute heartbreak. They were having the chance of. Uh, even Especially to like a team like Denmark or Switzerland. Who would you yeah, want to miss the winning penalty? Um, Phil Foden. Well, that bloody nice baby. Nah, Jack Grealish. Yeah, no, nah, Jack Grealish is up there for me. Or oh, Harry Kane. Oh, you know, you'll probably take the first one. He's probably. Uh, Foden, him, why he's bloody putting on his Snapchat and Gaza celebration and all that. And to be honest, any of them miss it, I'm buzzing. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. If they get if they get beat in the final penalties or something like that, it's like Scotland have won the World Cup. Well, it's not really. That's a bit embarrassing to say that, but I just hope they do, I hope they don't get anything. With the semi finals and final being at Wembley, does that give England an advantage? Do you think it's rigged? Uh, definitely, definitely. If we had the advantage in the group playing three home games, yeah, definitely. Of uh, I can Scotland play that like at home uh, two games but one of them wasn't really, and one wasn't really at home was it no. it was I was, I was still away but at home I like, know uh, like, away changing dressing room and all that I just feel it's very stupid to have England playing every single game we can at Wembley I was, I was reading something right and after this week like after the quarters England have only travelled 800 miles and that that's just the Rome where Switzerland's done over yeah. 8,000 already I, I've seen that yeah well, they've been to what, quite unfair. Azerbaijan, they've been, uh, Rome, Russia as well, Moscow. But where was their game against France? Sim. Um, was it in? Was it in Russia? Or no? It was a wee Bucharest or something like that, which is still like middle aye, Europe. Like that, so was it Bucharest? Was no. Would it have been Bucharest? That's Romania, is it not? Yeah. Um. I think Lewis is getting it up. Uh, either, I rest, I. Yeah, either way, they've travelled miles and miles where England's only had. I mean, Scotland, you could say the same about Scotland, but they've not got as far as what England have. But you could say the same about the Italians as well. Where was the Italy game played? Uh, who did they have again? They played. It's gone blank. Austria. Yeah. And where was that? And that was in Rome. Uh, no, that, that was at Wembley, sorry. That was yeah, so it was, yeah. I forgot about that. Um, so, moving on from the fiasco about Wembley, is there any players in the Euros that stood out for you guys? This is going to sound so biased, but for the one game, Billy Gilmore is... Fair enough. If we're going off Scotland, Grant Hanley, your fat performance as well, so some point I've what... Just a few, no stood out, but a few inches fast. Obviously, you've got a few inches fast. You've Pan Dave, obviously, being one of the oldest players yeah. to score. Fair play to him, him massively. You've got Modric, who's now Croatia's youngest in the world, and oldest in the world, scorer at Euros. To be fair to you, football knowledge. Um, ben. Lewis, any other players in the whole Euros that stand, stand out for you? Um... Ever scores against England to put them out. <laughs> That's who'll stand out again for me. One player, for, Forsberg for Sweden was also it. He's, he's a quality. Yeah, player. he's been quality. Yeah. But he's obviously shit getting goals. Just as normally the top goal scorer for top goal scorers have all been as quality. Some of the best players in the world, like Lewandowski and that. But I think instead of being a, some players that have stood out, it's more teams that have stood out. Yeah. Like your Sweden, your Denmark, Switzerland and that. Just all of them as a team performance has stood out mainly. 
I think even Yarmolenko stood out for Ukraine. I think he's been yeah. superb at what they've done. I was going to say Forsberg, Schick, even Karim Benzema as well. Uh, he's, he's been, been class for France. Very good. You can't deny that obviously top goal scoring in the tournament is Ronaldo, but you know what he's going to do. He'll score no. goals for Portugal and mostly every game they'll play. Yeah. But Paul Pogba, so he stood out massively for France. Yeah. Even uh, he's always... Locatelli for Italy as well. He's or been... Berardi. He had a decent game. One game. One, his first game, Berardi. He was very good. Yeah, he's been quite good as well. So, as for the years, you think it's been a good tournament or do you think it's been quite a dull tournament or do you think it's been quite entertaining? Us? It's been entertaining in stages and games where Scotland have played and like the big games, but the weird games just not not interested me. I found myself watching like Ukraine Macedonia, and I was like, "Why am I watching this?" But it was quite I a decent. Was it was quite a decent game, but I would never ever watch it because it's the Euros. You just want to watch every game possible. As for you, Ben, have you enjoyed the tournament overall? Uh, definitely. I think obviously Scotland being it's just made it. It's probably the most enjoyable tournament I've watched in a while since I was younger. Obviously, but I feel like. Even just games of this week, you've had some absolute amazing games. The France game, the Spain game, like obviously there's been multiple. But then, even games like you say, like Hungary, Hungary were a very good team to watch, and they made it enjoyable. They, they playing, yeah, it just, did. Uh, so uh, it's been a very enjoyable tournament. Moving on from the Euros, then we're going to talk about the transfers that some Scottish clubs have done so far. We'll start with Falkirk, Ben. Um, you've, you're quite happy with the right. signings that you've made. Um, talk us through the signings that Falkirk's made and how impressed you are with them. So far, I'm very looking forward to obviously Paul Sheeran coming in as manager. Uh, signings that have been put that have been made so far, I'm happy. You've had Ryan Williamson, so you'd usually know about about him. Is that part of last season? Well, he, he played well for part of last season, demolished us a few times. I'm very happy. I've just got a good attack right back in because mm-hmm. that's what we. Where attack teams are sitting in. Uh, we've got Brad McKay from Inverness, who's been a yeah. very good signing for us. He's, he's a championship quality centre half, the top end championship. Uh, we've brought in, obviously, we've got some new players, like players from deals again, like Ben Hallnut. Uh, the other player we brought in, like, is it McGuffey, Craig McGuffey? Yeah. From Martin, who I've not seen much of him, but the clips I have seen, he's been a good player, good attacking threat. Uh, same with Aidan Nesbitt. I think in one big, big signing in the future, I think he'll be very good for us if he gets played in the right position. Uh, Seb Ross from Cove, obviously, he didn't play a loads last season, loads of minutes for Cove, but he's only 21, so he's got time to improve. And Sheeran coached him at Aberdeen Youth. And then, uh, who, who's our signing we've made? I'm trying to think who the other one was. Brad McKay, Williamson, McGuffey, Nesbitt, or oh, Heverington from yeah. Iowa. Aye. Not, not experienced. Him, but experienced, good, hard centre mid as someone else, another thing we need in the club. So I'm happy so far, just obviously. We've only been linked on one more player since I can, that I thought of, that I know of as Michael Roof, only from yeah. our team, which affects yeah. me. But get yeah, maybe another four or five signings minimum, and I'll be happy. A big miss for you as well, be Connor Sam. Oh, uh, no. Oh, of course. I'll, 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 be, I'll get to see him that hour. No, it's, it's physical presence, you know, up front. I think that his ability is off to score goals that I think he's well missing next season to uh, try to get it back into the championship. But uh, tying a row watching him. <laughs> I for, just can't get my head around that signing that Barry <laughs> Ferguson signed him at Owl. Them two in a change room together. It's like chalk and cheese. Bad it wasn't at Kelty. <laughs> Signing for him at Kelty, but I think that Falkirk will do well this season. Obviously, they've got Queen's Park. Uh, I say that, yeah. I've said that for the last few seasons. It's no. <laughs> yeah, true. But they have got more competition yet, and this year with Queen's Park, Alloa, Airdrie, Cove Rangers as well, who will all be fighting to. At least get into the playoffs. Um, mm. As for Lewis, but Lewis, how do you see Falkirk doing so far with the signings that they've made? With the signings they've made, they've added quality like they need. And I think play, playoffs, I don't oh. think they'll win the league. We're but, we're we have to win the league. 
Who do you think will win it then, Liz? Um, Cove. Cove. Yeah. I, I don't think I mean, when you look, when you look at the two, they've just managed to get Vigors and Draper in. Uh, you've said this, but when they've let us sign Robbie Leach, who was at us, who yeah, they, uh, they signed that um, Kyle Gulley as well today from Hamilton, the goalie. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I don't think they'll do. As, I don't think they'll get do as well as they did last season. There'll be as much a threat. I feel like Vigors is obviously their quality player. Signing Robbie Leach, who was at us, just it kind of shows we are taking their young, good talent, and they're taking our kind of younger talent that kind of just fell behind. and wasn't good enough at all. They've got a good manager though, Ben. No, no, they don't. He's only calls <laughs> his body that father-in-law. He's a greasy-haired rat. Doesn't have a clue. Signing boys have went on Love Island and that. The boy doesn't have a clue. And Ben and Lewis. <laughs> exactly. It doesn't have oh. a clue to It's just, if he, if he done bad in that job, he'd be out of a marriage, he'd be out of a family. So that's the only reason he's doing decent. What did Hartley do wrong? I don't see anything he done, he done wrong. Shut up. McKinnon Shut got relegated. Aye, uh, it was Hartley's fault. We're in that position. The players he signed, half of them probably don't even play football anymore. Probably not. One went on Love Island, so I mean, I one went on Love Island. One's a part time football, a part time DJ. Who went on Love Island and left after Follow three days? Evans. Oh dear, what are you saying, Liz? Follow and Evans. What went on Love Island and left after three days? <laughs> as good as his folk at career, to be fair. Right, probably uh-huh. not. He's one of the performances are probably better than his folk performances. <laughs> as for Dunferman, Liz. How have you assessed our window? I mean, we've not made many signings, but how have you assessed our window well, so far? Two goalies. <laughs> that Fraser Curry has not been announced yet, but has us in his bio and been loaned at the bonus. Yeah, that's and big Dennis. I think Dennis is a quality signing. He's actually a good second choice goalie slash yeah. first team goalie as well. And then <laughs> obviously White will be coming in. Nikolai. He's just. <laughs> The Bulgarian King. Bulgarian King. I think he improved at Inverness compared to what the player was that he was at Falkirk. I mean, he wasn't up to much at Falkirk, but I think that he's... What's that? He wasn't good enough for us to get a chance. To be fair, you... And even that was in a shocking Falkirk team as well, so... That was a team that beat you. But he's went down, though. No, with him. Yeah, he went down. That was a team that got... Yeah, because yeah, remember, you beat us, must have been. and then Ross County beat, uh, then Ross County beat you. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, okay, exactly. You just got beat off a team that went down, and you was in a part of a team that went down. You might have done well for Inverness, but they're a totally different side to you. They're a better side. That, that's why we got in the playoffs. Great. Look, Whoa. their manager had family issues and had to go away. And then yeah. McCann completely transformed them. Exactly. Yeah, see, they had to get luck. You just had to get luck, sorry. Well, I don't... Just hurry up. Either way, he got the Championship team of the year last year, which meant he must have done something right last season. I think he scored, what, 13, 14 goals last season as well, so... Was um, it not in league? What? Was it not only nine league goals, though? I think it was, like, Maybe 14 I... in all competitions anyway. So, um, I don't know if you... I think he's done well so far in the pre-season games, but the pre-season results don't fill me with confidence. What's that? Bully be there and McManus, who's your top goal scorer last season, who you've got money for. I don't know how you've yes. got money but will he be there and McManus, who's your top goal scorer last season? He's a different type yeah, of player for McManus, though. McManus but, is like a pressing forward, whereas. Well, I'm confused by his obviously. You've got Craig Whiten, who's coming on a deal, who can play as a number 10 as a striker, but the only reason McManus is going to turn off is because Grant wants a tall and a small. That's, he's done it at upper yeah. clubs. Is Whiting going to fit in? Or... Whiting, can, Whiting, last season when we had O'Hara, McManus and Whiting, both on the starting line of it, I think they, they tended to start Whiting over on the left. But I think Whiting's too good not to play up front. I think that when he played up front last season, he was very good. But then when he was played up wide, he was a bit isolated. So I do think that uh, it would be a tough selection for Grant to choose. But... The midfield does not fill me with confidence and now we need to bring in a lot, uh, at least a few players there and the defence. What's that? 
Pybus. Yeah, he was on I, trial. I don't know if he's getting a contract or not. Red obviously deal. had I, Isaac Riggs as well. He's not um, getting a deal. Is he not? No, nah, there's Reigns on the career. They've had the Grant sort of hinted to the four that played against Spartans. Probably won't get deals because not good enough. Oh, I mean, the boy against Spartans, then they got a chance because he got sent off after 19 minutes. I know. But uh, I've still not seen it. I wasn't at the game, but... Uh, I mean, they need to get Kai Kennedy in, though. They need to be unreal. I don't get Kai Kennedy enough. If he's going to go anywhere, we'll go Parthak. Yeah, that's, I do agree. They, I think they'll, they'll, end up, up. they'll end up low in Premiership. I think... I think you end up at Partick because I mean it's obviously it probably lives in Glasgow close to where he lives more. I suppose we did have Lewis Mayo last season, which some fans want him back. Uh, Lewis, <laughs> we, both, we both have the same opinion on Lewis Mayo. Um, oh, shambolic! <laughs> but we do need at least a few loan and transfer recruitments in in the next few weeks because obviously the Betfred or not the Betfred Cup, the Premier Sports Cup starts next week away to Patrick Fissel, I think our first game is. So that's a tough test to start it off. Lewis, how do you see us doing in that Betfred Cup group? Um, I think we do need the signings to come in or else we'll end up finishing third in that group. Yeah, I, I agree. I do but agree. If, if Grant's watching this, I'm a free agent in the way. So if you want to get me in. Oh, did, yeah. you, did you leave your club? I'm, I folded. Did they? Oh. Aye. Didn't they that? So, I'm a free agent, so if he needs me, I'm available. What yeah, was, it? was it a Fife Cup for Hosgold, who was under 17s, Cali Bell? Aye, that was what a goal. What a player. I taught him his way. I played one. i seen that, uh, yeah, i seen that goal, and then i seen that, uh, the goal against Unfailman for Civil Service, Strollers. I think it was you and Valentine. Nah. Have you seen it, Liz? No, nah, I've not. Oh, that's just why they say you the players are playing. He's ripped on New Arsenal. Yeah, he, he, I think he flicked it over his head and then flicked it over the keeper's head. And then, no, he flicked over the keeper's head, you know. I, I think he flicked over the defender and like, chipped the goalie. Kept it over the defender and chipped over the keeper's head. Yeah, it was a good goal, to be fair. But apparently the Silver Service Strollers keeper had an absolute field day. He was Aye, kept, kept on with that game. Yeah. Um, as for other transfers that have stood out as a final segment of the podcast, Ben, is there any transfers that you can think of that have stood out in Scottish football so far? I see. I don't really pay attention to a lot of transfers unless it's in Falkirk's league. So that's who we're going to be competing against most. And there's not been any much transfer news in Falkirk's league. That's kind of made me like a bit scared of teams going to come out. I feel like compared to our recruitment, Nothing's really else you've got. I love when it's said Salmon, Mark. How did I not scare you? Mark Dernan and Connor Salmon. <laughs> Just say that I'm not one of two names in Scottish football, but that's it's, true. Obviously, you've got Celtic going and getting big Ange as a new manager. Uh, I feel like that could maybe be a good appointment for him. Don't know much about him, but in his interview, he seemed like he's, uh, he's ready to just go. Obviously, Rangers with Gerard, they're looking to recruit some good players. Hibs have signed Doyle Hayes today. Uh, yeah. Don't know if he's going to be very good for them, but it's just Jack Ross is normally good with signings. Yeah, I think that Hibs' recruitment has been, as I said before, spot on in most most cases. But um, I'm just trying to think if there's any transfers that stand out. Obviously, Aberdeen bought in the American striker Ramirez as well. Yeah, um, I think uh, another one that sort of stands out in a way is uh, Cardo to Kelty. That's, yeah, that's true. It's a big move in that league. Yeah, Bud Jonas as well, which is a good yeah, sign for Kelty. Um, trying to think any others. Blair Henderson to Spartans is... So they have thing. actually signed him because I've seen him on the team sheet against Hearts last night. Yeah, it's, and the, I, I it's the Blair him, Henderson. But it is the Blair Henderson. Yeah. Why don't I will never let him go? We're getting quite a lot of players now. Obviously, it was part time anyway, but you get a lot of players that are going down to other clubs and they're getting money is because they're able to do other jobs as well. They like obviously Aye. Vibe came down, Cardinals obviously started with the went to Kelly. Uh, but Jonas, I don't see much in that one for trying to push for his career and do well in his career. I, I feel think like the championship team done it, but 
when um, Barjona spoke to uh, the guys at Kelty, I think that he's do he's going to do like a uni course to back up his career if the football doesn't plan out. So I think that he's going to do that and, and then go it down to part time so that he can focus on that. But from the court, so I'm watching him against Partick Thistle and against Newton Green Star. Obviously, Newton Green Star is not a, the level that Kelty's going to be playing at. But Partick Thistle, he, he was a bit quiet in the opening stages, but for the second goal. You can see the quality that he has, and I think that it would be a good signing if he just settles in a wee bit more into this the system that Kelty play as well. But I do think that he will be a successful signing, obviously having the experience of playing in the championship. Come on, the balls. <laughs> right, we'll wrap it up there, guys. Thank you for joining yeah. me again, lads, and thank you for watching. On the Love Island. <laughs> oh, God, you've just exposed us, there, Liz. No, right. really. oh, yeah, I didn't watch that. Show. Oh, yeah, Ben. Yeah, I don't watch that. Yeah, right. sure you don't. Right. right. See you later, guys. Cheers. Bye. Catch you later.